in a previous video, I showed you how we can treat springs using Newtonian mechanics and how that system operates as a simple harmonic oscillator. Uh, in today's lecture, I'm going to talk about a completely different system, which is a pendulum. But we're going to see a lot of similarities between this system and the spring mass system. So for a simple pendulum, you have So if this is what your pendulum is hanging from, you have a mass M suspended from a string of length L and on the vertical, you can move the mass to an angle theta. Now at so like the spring mass system, the pendulum system will have some equilibrium position here before it swings back through to its final position, which would also have an angle theta. And so just like the spring mass system, we start from one position, we go through the equilibrium position to a final position or the furthest away position. And then we go back through the equilibrium position and return to the starting position. So that in that way, it's similar to either uniform circular motion or the simple harmonic oscillator of a mass and a spring. So the physics of this is gonna be slightly different. Obviously there's a different force that's causing this uh, periodic motion. And a few things that I wanna note before we move on so we know we can figure out the path length. Uh, that's this dotted line here. Oops. So this arc length, using our arc length formula, an arc length I'm gonna call S. So the arc length is L theta. If you have your angle theta in radians, and so you can just to check this, the arc length of a circle is the perimeter of a circle and the perimeter formula of a circle is two pi r. Uh, that two pi is the uh, number of radians if you go all the way around a circle. So that's where the perimeter formula comes from and that's what arc length formula comes from. Okay, so that would be the half arc length. So the total arc length would be two L theta, right? Because the the pendulum goes through a total angle of two theta. Okay, so that's the total arc length. So another thing to note is that, I guess we'll do this on the next slide. So if we look at our pendulum and mass, if we want to use conservation of energy, we can determine the velocity at the bottom of the 
at the equilibrium position if we use conservation of energy. So the initial energy we'll start with is potential energy due to gravity and we'll end up with the kinetic energy. So the mass of the system isn't going to matter. The velocity would just be square root 2gh. So the catch here is trying to figure out what h is. So h is this distance. So the distance from the center of mass of each that distance is h. So the, the final height, h final, is just going to be l, because that's the length of the pendulum. But the initial height is not going to be l. It's going to, we're going to have to use trig to figure out what our initial height is. So we have, I'm going to redraw this triangle. Maybe I'll move this out of the way. So H final, maybe I'll color code. So I'll call the red line H final equals L. And then this blue will be another triangle that we'll use to find each initial. So this triangle, this length is L. We want to know this length. Well, let's call it Y, maybe. And we have this angle theta. So we know theta and L. So Y equals L cosine theta. Okay. So H initial equals L cosine theta. So if you want to find the total change in height, H, you get H final times H initial. So that's L minus L cosine theta. Which, so you can factor out the L and get L times one minus cosine theta. Okay, so this would be square root two G L times one minus cosine theta. Okay, but now let's check to make sure this height makes sense. L times one minus cosine theta, where this is our picture. So this was initial, this was final L. Theta. So what if theta equals zero? Then we should get that h equals zero. So let's check. Okay, so h equals L times one minus cosine of zero. Cosine of zero is one, so you get one minus one, which is zero. So H equals zero. So that checks out. So it's always good to do those little uh, quick checks to make sure that whatever relationships you derive make sense for a certain boundary condition that you can easily figure out. Okay.
So this is how you would deal with conservation of energy with a pendulum system. Um, now let's move on to uh, looking at the forces and we'll use that to then derive the uh, period. So if we look at our free body diagram on this guy, we've got gravitational force going down. And then we have tension pointing up the string. And now I'm going to rotate my coordinate system like this, oops, this is y, this is x, and so now I would have a an x component of gravity and then a y component that. So similar to what we've done previously with ramps. So again, you can do a bunch of trig to figure out what the correct trig function to use to break your components up, but I'm just going to guess and check because I'm lazy. So Let's assume that the x position is sine theta and the y component is cosine theta. And we can check this. So at theta equals zero, we want the x component to be zero and we want the y component to be mg. So the so if we plug in sine of zero, sine of zero is zero, so that checks out. And then the y component we get mg cosine of zero, cosine of zero is one, so we just get mg. So that checks out. So we made a good guess. Now, the problem is that the, um, the force that this ball is feeling is not constant. So when you're up at this maximum part, uh, you've got some X component of gravity that's pulling you back towards the center of your swing. Then at the center of your swing, your tension and gravitational force are equal, so there's no net force, but you have your momentum from swinging down, so you keep swinging until you, and then once you're past the equilibrium point, uh, the gravitational force starts trying to pull you back down, you eventually run out of energy and then you swing back and you do this until you either dissipate energy through some friction or air resistance or you keep going forever if you're in a perfect uh, environment. So just like with the harmonic oscillator or in the spring mass system, the force that this ball is feeling is not constant with time. And so we can't use the um, kinematic equations that we derived for a constant acceleration system. So just like we're going to see with the spring mass system, uh, we can use techniques 
uh, like the Lagrangian or the Hamiltonian to derive the equations of motion for this pendulum system. But for right now, I wanna show you how to derive the period for a pendulum using only uh, Newtonian mechanics. Just like I showed you the period for the spring mass system. Okay, so um, we've already seen the uh, the x component of the force in the previous slide. So uh, we can write down Newton's second law. So some of the forces in the x equals m a x. So the only force in the x was the g component of gravity. So this is m g sine theta equals m a. And instead of just writing the x component of a over and over again, I'm just going to write it as m a. Uh, so your masses go away, and your acceleration is g sine theta. Now one of the tricks that we're going to use is that, uh, so let's say for our pendulum, this angle theta is small. So let's assume theta is small. And so what is meant by saying that theta is small is usually that theta is less than about 15 degrees. And so the reason that we want to assume that theta is small is that we can use the small angle approximation. And so the small angle approximation says that sine of theta is approximately theta for small theta. And so this comes from the Taylor series expansion of sine. Um, so that's something from calculus that you should have seen, uh, but I'm not gonna get into that for right now. So for right now, we'll just assume that this is small angle approximation is true. And so now this acceleration just becomes g theta. Okay, so we now have that acceleration equals g theta. Now I'm gonna rewrite theta in terms of some arbitrary arc length s, so s equals L theta. So the angle theta equals S over L. So this is just the arc length formula that we talked about earlier. So acceleration equals G S over L. Okay. So now just like we did with the spring mass system, uh, we're gonna come up with another equation for acceleration. So we had acceleration equals V squared over R. And then for the spring mass system, we said V squared over X uh, because X was the direction that the spring was moving in. Uh, for this system, we're going to say over S because that's the path that the ball is moving through. It's not moving along the L direction, it's moving along the arc length S. Okay, so then we also have the relationship between 
Uh, so this is all from circular motion. So also from circular motion, we have V equaling omega times R. And instead of going around in a circle, we're doing this uh, pendulum motion. So it's going to be omega S. So V squared equals omega squared S squared. So this equals omega squared S squared over S, which goes to acceleration equaling omega squared s. So this is going to be equation two. This was equation one. So now we want to equate equation one and equation two. So acceleration equals acceleration. Um, Gs over L equals omega squared s. So your s is cancel omega squared equals g over l. So omega equals square root g over l. And then for period, we remember from rotational motion that period equals square root g over l, or oops. period equals two pi over omega. So period equals two pi square root L over G. So using just Newton's laws, uh, we're able to derive the period of a pendulum. Um, but we'll see in couple weeks with Lagrangians and next month with um, Hamiltonians, uh, we can derive this uh, using higher level math like differential equations, but uh, in a much simpler way uh, with fewer steps. This has been a Dr. Strassbau lecture. Keep the credentials. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell for notifications. Yes.